G'day guys and welcome to another one of my Digimon Rearise videos. We're doing another coming to global soon Digimon list. Um, this is where you're going to find out what Digimon released on the JP side around this time so you can kind of plan how you're going to spend your Digirubies. Firstly, credit to Chordos2 and Ryu over on the Digimon Rerise Discord. They're absolute legends. They do all the translations, all the data mines and stuff. Uh, make sure you check out that Discord as well. And if you haven't already, if this is the first time you're seeing one of my videos or you're a returning viewer, make sure you subscribe. We're nearly at 1,000 subscribers, so um, make sure you smash that subscribe button. Um, I'm going to give you my opinions on these Digimon. If you like a Digimon, summon for him. Look, man, it's a gacha game. If you're not summoning for what you like, I don't know why you're playing. Um, I'm just going to give you a brief overview of the Digimon and the release schedule that they released in, so you can plan those Digirubies. Um, this is roughly where we are now. So we've got Oriyukin here, who just released on the global side the time I'm making this video. He released around, oh, December 31st. So he was the New Year's uh, banner Digimon. This list will go down to about or oh, two and a half months after that, around March time. So as you know, Global likes to mix things up and throw things all over the place. Some of these Digimon have already released. Some should have released ages ago. Um, it's all over the place. General rule, Global is releasing things much faster and combining banners than JP. So this video might last a month. It might last two and a half months like the release did on JP. Anyway, uh, Green Prince, Mummy, and Green Lilith Mon already in the game. Shine RM, I'm not sure if he's on the Global side yet. The reason why I don't know is because he's fairly lackluster. Um, I wouldn't be summoning for this guy. I think he is. I'm not too sure. Lucimon DFQ should have come with Lucimon Satan Mode. Global's really lagging on um, DFQ slash SDQ events. So I'm not sure why this guy isn't released. He's really good and he's worth grinding out. Um, he gives 50% power, tech, and critical rate to all allies, um, which is really good. Support his low cost, whack him in the underworld dungeon team. Uh, this Lucimon fighter mode is the uh, egg reward, the um, subjugation egg reward, which isn't on global yet. Should be soon though. Lucimon Satan mode we know is already in. Uh, this Gaiamon I think is already released. Sukuyamon Miko mode, I've already made a video showcasing this absolute underworld dungeon beast. Already confirmed to be coming very, very soon on the global side, so make sure you look out for her. If you want more details, check out my showcase video. But basically, she's a healer that reduces cooldown and can remove statuses from your team. Um, Alpha Monoryukin's already here, a beast. Around this time here, when Sukuyamon Miko mode and following later the Kazuhamon um, Miko mode released, I'll quickly talk about Kazuhamon. Um, she is a tech buffer, so tech and critical rate to all your allies, which is quite handy. Um, she released at the same time as the next ticket banner, which had Chaos Dramon, Defensive Beast, finally pulled him on JP's side. I do have a showcase of him as well. He's really, really good. He increases 50% defense and reduces enemies' crit rate by 50%. They're both forever, so it's really hard to get rid of them. You have to take him out, and he's tanky as all hell. Gold Vigramon and Skull Satamon also released in that banner. Skull Satamon is still one of the only ultimates you'll see in PvP on JP still. He is an absolute support monster. 50% reduction to enemy's defense and 50% tech damage resistance. So whack him with your tech Digimon. They're going to be hitting really hard. Clash battle, PvP. He's squishy, but he gets the job done. Um, Kazuhamon, I've already spoken about. Hopefully these two release, I believe they will, at the same time on Global, so you can try and pull for them if you want at the same time. They're both really solid. Sakuyamon Miko mode is still one of the best supports in the game. A Finemon Fighter mode, I'm predicting, will be the next major release after Alphamon Oriyukin. Um, I'll make a showcase video for this Digimon. I do have it at skill level 10. Basically, she's another multi-hit Digimon akin to uh, Rasenmon Fury Mode. She boosts her own critical rate and kills blue enemies. Um, a fairly decent, decent power clash battle choice. Looks pretty wicked as well. Um, Chimeramon has already released on the global side with the Malamodismon. 
Again, DFQs lagging behind tons. This Pale Dramon's really solid though. Um, definitely worth grinding out. He protects all allies from Poison, Burn and Error, which is your damage over time statuses. And he increases defense, so really good in the Underworld Dungeon. Similar story with the Stingmon. Protects you from immobilization skills. So definitely two DFQs to keep an eye out for. Beamon Goggles is already out. Metal Seedramon's already out. Red Fighter Mode. Is he out already? He is a debuffer, I believe. Shortens enemies buff by three turns. Shortens enemies buff by uh, three turns. Single target, though. So he's nothing too ridiculously powerful. But he is an Imperial Dramon, so it's always cool to have. Skull Greymon, we know, is already out. He's still a beast. Apocalymon released much after. As you can see, Alphamon released. We already discovered that was New Year's. Apocalymon didn't release until February which is ridiculous that he's already in the game. And that's why everyone went so nuts when his banner was announced on Global. Oh, now it starts getting really juicy. This is where it's going to be really, really hard to decide what I want to spend my Digi Rubies on. First, we have our first Omegamon Gacha, Omegacha, which releases Zwart D, one of my favorite Digimon in the whole game. He is so cool. He is an absolute... Um, Deathmark Machine, he's going to be giving Fade so much. He's the first Digimon to protect from Fade, only to blue allies though, and he increases his own tech with a damage limiter. He's really cool, I love him. I still use him in Blue Week on PvP. In the same banner will be the Garuru Cannon Deft Purple Omegamon. He's pretty much a straight upgrade on the OG Red Omegamon. You won't use the red one if you have this guy. You can run them together because they're different colors, but um, this guy definitely, his power is better, his skills are better, he's got the damage limiter still, he has cooldown reduction, multi-hit stun, he's good. He's definitely, if you like Omegamon, this Omeg Omegamon Gacha is definitely something to consider. Uh, Boltmon, Yellow Boltmon's actually pretty cool, but I wouldn't um, spare my Digirubis on his egg. Uh, because he pretty much gets replaced by Heavy Leomon. So he's got a taunt and every time a super taunt and every time he gets hit he increases his power. So it's actually pretty cool. Um, a pretty cool concept. All the attacks get directed to him and he boosts his power. However, he does get power creps. If you already have a Craniumon, I wouldn't spend any Digirubis on him, and it's only a 25% chance from his egg in the shot to get him as well, so yeah. Um, the Bond of Courage and Bonds of Friendship, Ogimon and Gururumon released around this time. This is when the movie was releasing in JP. They're ultra level Digimon, they look friggin' awesome, but they're very, very lackluster. This is an easy, easy skip for me, guys. I would not even touch this banner. Um, this guy increases block rate and kills purple. This guy, um, the Gabumon, Increases block rate and kills purple as well. Seriously, like, they they look cool. They're great trophy Digimon. I don't think they've returned. Definitely an easy skip for me. <laughs> you guys already know what's coming up next. Beelzemon Blast Mode. Oh! <laughs> this guy is pretty much a must-have. He is a freakishly powerful Digimon. You could even start saving for this guy now if you're only interested in Meta Digimon. He is a... Oh, just like freakishly good. Multi-hit with Crit Multiplier on his main. A five enemy, five turn buff reduction on his sub skill. So that's going to be removing your damage limiters evasion. Anything under five turns. His passive skill protects himself from status elements. Absolute freak. He's going to dominate PvP, he's going to dominate the Underworld Dungeon, he's going to dominate Clash Battle. If there's ever a must-have Digimon, this guy is one of them. Definitely keep an eye out for him. His release date was February 29th, so the end of Feb. So if we're following this schedule, should be two months away. But I'd be preparing for him to come much sooner than that, knowing Global. Um, this yellow Evermon is super cool. Um, I've done a showcase video on him. He has super crit, which is 20 times damage very rarely. He can hit millions, 
3 million damage I got him to hit, I think, in my video. He's a bit of a gimmicky Digimon. You won't use him much, but he's a good box trophy to have. He's available from the um, the Spiral Raid uh, eggs that you can get. Purple Rusty, never seen him use. I've never, never used him, never seen anyone use him. He's very, very forgettable. He's like a tank purple Digimon, I don't know. Kind of like a confusing skill set. Um, he's available from the egg shop too, so I wouldn't be what, spending any Digirubies on him. Uh, this is where the next ticket banner came out. The one that had Cyberdramon, Blitz, and Kreskarumon. Not sure what they're gonna do here because they've already released Blitz and Cress. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure how they're gonna tackle this. If you wanna know more about these two, I already have showcases for them as well. Lunamon DFQ came around this time with the Titamon and Dianamon banner, which we've already had the step up on Global. They're super early, like this Dianamon released in March and Alpha One was, what, the end of December, wasn't he? So that's like two months early for this step up banner. Not that they're meta breaking or anything, but they're um, definitely released on the Global schedule, which we know is absolutely heckers. Finally, to wrap up this video, Dorogoromon. This guy is also an absolute beast. He's one of the best uh, power supports in the game, still on the JP side. If you combine this guy with um, Beelzemon Blast Mode, you're gonna be having a good time in PvP, I'll tell you what. Um, his main skill deals quite a lot of damage with the crit multiplier, defense reduction, nothing too crazy on his sub skill. Passive, 50% crit rate, protect red allies from sudden death, which is good, and 50% power damage resist resistance. Just whack him on your team, have Beelzem on blast mode, use his sub skill and his main skill, you're done. That's PvP finished. Like, such a deadly combo, and it was for ages. So definitely, this guy, if you're running any kind of power team at all, Clash, PvP, he's definitely one to look out for as well. All right, I think I might wrap it up there. Guys, if you like this video, make sure you like it. Like for like. <laughs> um, obviously, this schedule can can change, but hopefully it's given you a little bit of um, an idea of what to save your Digirubies for. I will be saving... It's going to be hard to skip Sukuyama, but I think I might. Um, I'll do a showcase for a Funimon fighter mode so you can fully check her out. After that, a lot of this is already released, but it's got to be Beelzemon. If I have anything left in me, it will be for um, Dorogoromon. Also, the Omega Mon Gacha is going to be hard to skip as well because I love Zwart D. He's really, really good. Look, it's hard for me. It's going to be hard for you to spend your rubies wisely, keep PvPing, get those rewards up. Let me know what you're summoning for, guys. And I'll catch you in the next Digimon Re-Rise video. Thanks for watching. Bye!